Hey everyone, Chris Matson here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a motion study for the Geneva wheel mechanism. Let's do it. Okay, there's three main things that I'm gonna do right now. First thing I'm gonna do is put my CAD strategy together, paper and pencil. Then I'm gonna create all the CAD models. Then I'm just gonna jump right into the motion study. Here we go. All right, I got my CAD strategy for all four of the parts. Here's my rough strategy that I'm going to use. And now it's time for me to just jump in and do it. Okay, so I've just created uh, the four CAD models. Now I believe looking at the assembly drawing, there's some bushings I need to put in here. And the assembly drawing says the bushings come straight from McMaster car. So I'm going to get those. Okay, so I just got that one. If you're not entirely sure how I did that, let me just talk through it real fast. If I come in here into McMaster car, get back to the main McMaster car page. Up here, I'm just gonna type in the part number that's in the bill of materials, 6391K943. And then it brings up the oil embedded sleeve bearings, which is what we are using and then it has expanded out the number that I need, which is down here, this 6391K943. And then it says product detail, going to product detail, I can now get the CAD model. Here's the 3D SolidWorks model, and I'm gonna download it. Then I'll just put those in the same folder where I have made all those other parts, and then I'll be good to start making an assembly. All right, I'm gonna pause for a minute here and I'm going to get myself a an assembly strategy together. It's not a very complicated uh, part, but I do wanna think about this in terms of subsystems. Um, and so I'm gonna make a little strategy on that. All right, I've got my um, strategy together. I'm gonna have three subsystems. It only took about 30 seconds to do that, but I think it's gonna save me some time later to think about it this way. So, here we go. Okay, I've just assembled the small bushing. I have thought about how I would do this from a manufacturing point of view. I would probably set this down on its flat base and then press in the bushings into the holes and so I have made it coincident with this top surface uh, instead of making it coincident with the bottom surface because a press arm or a press piston or something would push on this surface this way. So I'm always thinking about the manufacturing when it comes to those sorts of things. All right, now let's get the next one in here. By the way, this is not showing as fully defined and I know that's because I don't have a locked uh, con concentricity. Uh, because it will be pressed and stuck in there, I am going to lock it because it will not rotate. Now I'm going to do the same thing in here. I'm going and just taking care of the lock rotation because those are going to be pressed together. Okay, so I've made my three sub-assemblies that I'm going to use and I'm now going to create a full assembly of the Geneva wheel mechanism. So that's our full assembly. Okay, everything's looking pretty good at this point. We have basically uh, followed all the CAD models and created this part. Now we haven't checked to see, you know, how good this assembly is, what kind of interferences we have, or anything like that. I'm actually just going to do that now. We have just modeled up this whole thing as an assembly as a couple of sub-assemblies, and now we wanna to try to do a motion study. All right, so um, the motion study tab is accessed down here at the bottom. 
Okay, important to recognize that over here on this side we have animation and then we have basic motion. We want to do a basic motion study and there's a few things we need to do in our basic, basic motion study. What I first need to do though is get a, decide how long this animation is going to go for this study. It's going to go for 10 seconds. I just pulled a little black thing, just kind of dragged it over here to say that I'm going to do a 10 second animation except it's actually a basic motion study. Okay, the shaft is selected now and I want to apply a motor to it. Okay, maybe it doesn't want it to be chosen that way. Okay, so now I see the direction sign of the motor. This is how I want it to be because I want this pin to come into this slot and I want it to go around in a circle. So I want it to go that counterclockwise like that. Let's not have it go 100 RPM, but let's just say that it's 10 RPM for now. We're going to be constant speed on that. Now, this is a one that we're going to pick here. This means that this is going to rotate relative to something, and we want to rotate it relative to the base. And we do just a little check because it's good to check as we're going along. We have to click this button called Calculate the Motion Study, which it's going to do right now. It's going to decide to what degree this is going to work. Okay. That part is doing what it should be doing. What it is not doing is interacting with the wheel properly. So we need to figure out how to do that. Okay. And the way that we do that is we need to need to have some contact between things. And actually let's go into our motion study properties and let's fix our frames per second to be 30 frames per second. And let's have our contact resolution be high. And our, you know, I don't know what's going to happen if we put these all the way up. Let's see. Um, general options. Use these settings as default for new motion studies. Okay, we're going to pick that one. Let's see now if we still have to tell it the contact thing. So what we're going to do is calculate again. Okay, and it's not interacting with the um, wheel of the Geneva wheel at this point. So we're going to need to figure that out. And that's where we have to get our contact uh, to be just kind of just right. Okay, so how are we going to do that? We're going to come in here. We're going to pick this surface. And we're actually just going to try this contact thing. I want this to be in my contact group. These are solid bodies. Let's try it. Let's calculate the motion study again. Yeah, see now it's attempting to deal with this, but I can tell that it's having some trouble and it's not going to do any more than what it just did. And that's because it um, has a little bind. It's binded up just a little bit. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, right here, it does not appear there's any um, touching point, so that's good. Um, but we do have a major crash over here where this pin is now existing inside of this. So what we want to do to make this work is we have to start thinking about, whoops, we start thinking about how all the pieces are gonna fit together. So we're gonna come over here, we're gonna try to line this up that is interesting. It's like so tight right in here. I have to check to see if I even have these pin sizes to be right. Because um, I think that's going to be having some hard time. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to come in here and we're going to start to modify our parts so that our basic motion study might, uh, might work. So um, I'm going to measure some stuff. Measure this. And this diameter is 0.3. I use my pencil here and measure this. It's also 0.3. So that's a perfect line to line fit. Let's just see what happens if we change it so that it's not a perfect line to line fit. Because when it's a line to line fit, there's no clearance. And when there's no clearance, it can't move. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go modify the size of this pin and see what happens. 
Okay, now it's a good idea to get this close. So we can get it kind of on track for the most amount of success. Okay, so there's a little gap there and a little gap there. It's kind of a large gap, but we're going to try this now. Okay, we come back into our motion study, which is here. And we try to calculate the connections and it's stopped spinning uh, probably because this and this are close to line to line right in here we're gonna have to we're gonna have to check that out so if I wanted to see what happened I can come back and just hit this play button it's dealt with the first one and then it gets a little bit stuck so this is great these are simulations right and these simulations are trying to help us understand how things would behave in um, in sort of a real life setting. So what we're gonna do is measure a few more things. We're gonna measure this. And this one is 0.95. Okay, and then measure again. We're going to measure this one. And this one is also 0.95. So we are back to line to line on this. And that's going to give us a little bit of trouble. So let's go back in and change the same one that we did before. Okay, and look, I gave 50 thousandths, which is gigantic. Wow, that's, <clears throat> maybe that was not what I did over here. Okay, well, that's giant. Let's, since we're here, let's just see what it does. It's gonna flop around and, you know, cause that's what it would do in real life. It would flop around and then it might get stuck. So motion study. Come in here and calculate stuff. It moves. Now see it flopping a little bit and it's gotten stuck. Okay. It's good to um, think for a second, like computationally, what might be happening here. What might be happening here is that this point, which is, I think, a sharp point, right? That may get, be getting caught on this surface. So let's tighten this up and then we'll, we'll see what, um, we'll see what we can do. Save. I've been working on this now for an hour and 15 minutes in terms of the total CAD model strategy and now messing around with the motion study. Rebuild. I think we did that already. Okay. Come into the ASM. It's actually less than an hour and 15 minutes, but it's, but it's not far from that, just over an hour. Okay, here we have a little gap in there. Let's see what happens. Motion study, we always have to calculate all the interferences, or interference is not the right word, all the Okay, so we have gotten caught right up here again in this spot. So I'm gonna go make an adjustment to the wheel, put a little fillet in there, and we'll see if that solves any of it. Now, you might be asking yourself, why in the world are we doing this? None of this seems to make any sense. It's like we're trying to get the software to work. Actually, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the software to tell us where we might have trouble in sort of real life. And that's, you know, this is actually what would happen. We would get some catching possibly on those corners. So it's a good idea for us to think about those corners. And so in here then, actually I need to be looking at not this assembly, but instead I need to look at the wheel itself, better go open this one. All right, now let's put a fillet in here. Fillets are great for lead-ins. Okay, and there's no reason why it needs to be a tiny fillet. That's kind of a large fillet. Let's just go with it uh, for now. Let's see if this makes a difference for us. This is where design gets um, exploratory. And I delete that one. 
we are not trying to be random about this. If we get into random changing of things, we're actually going to, just going to get into a lot of trouble. But we're trying to use our intuition to figure out how something might work or might work better. Okay, so there's sort of some strange geometry in there, which I don't like. So we're just going to reorder. We're going to reorder the fillet and the chamfer. So here now I have a much better situation at, at these corners. A few minutes ago, it was kind of messy there. And this is where I'm having trouble, so I don't want to create more trouble by having messy surfaces or other crazy things there. And has this one been done? Yes, I now have my fillets in my corners. Okay, now we do see a sharp one here. This might also cause a little bit of trouble. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. Okay, coming back to our motion study. In our motion study, then, um, we need to calculate the we made it around twice and we hit our 10 seconds so let's play that one back great so that is how we create a motion study using an assembly. Now this is different than an animation. Uh, the motion study does things like calculates these interferences. And it does that actually for every frame in the system. And this allows us to think about what happens when you have line to line fits, meaning uh, the diameter of one thing is exactly the diameter of another. We don't have clearance, so we can't have movement. And then it also helps us to know if we're catching on things as we kind of were catching on this corner. So putting a fillet in there has helped. Now, um, I think that's about all we need to talk about. And now you just got to try this. Good luck. See you in the next video.